Good morning, respected members of Indian Society of Anesthesiologists. It gives me immense pleasure to have the chance to present the anesthetic management of a kyphoscoliotic patient on this platform. Without further ado, I'll dive right into the discussion. Kyphoscoliosis is a rare skeletal deformity that affects only 0.3 to 15% of the population, but cases with more than 20 degree deviation accounts for only 0.3 to 0.5%. And more than 30 degree deviation accounts merely for 0.2 to 0.3 percent. Even less frequently so, we see them for some surgical intervention. Our patient was a 35 year old female with a right adnexal cystic lesion posted for lower abdominal exploratory laparotomy with cystectomy who had severe post-traumatic kyphoscoliosis since the age of 12 years. Kyphoscoliosis has many etiopathogenesis, senile onset secondary kyphoscoliosis and congenital kyphoscoliosis being the two most common of them. Post-traumatic accounts for less than 1% of kyphoscoliotic patients. Kyphoscoliosis is also more common in women, affecting almost twice the number of men, and it is also more common on the right side. This patient, however, had left deviated scoliosis and kyphosis involving 11th thoracic to 3rd lumbar spine with a curve's angle of 80 degree, which almost certainly guarantees the presence of some restrictive lung disease. And sure enough, her pulmonary function test also indicated low forced expiratory volume at 1 second and low forced vital capacity and a preserved ratio between the two. Her arterial blood gas analysis revealed a low PaO2 with normal PaCO2 and pH, indicating low tidal volume, a gross ventilation perfusion mismatch, and which was compensated with increased respiratory rate. Breath holding time was 14 seconds and her MET score was 9, although she had an increased respiratory rate after two flights of stairs. Even with a near normal 2D echo report, here the challenge of resuscitation is skeletal deformity and this was explained to her preoperatively. Incentive spirometry, bronchodilators and deep breathing exercises were advised throughout her preoperative and postoperative period. She was properly counseled about the risks of general anesthesia and the challenges of regional anesthesia. As you can see here, her spinous process was deviated from third lumbar spine upwards and impalpable from lower thoracic level only. ICU bed with standby ventilator was prearranged and we went ahead with regional anesthesia that is combined spinal and epidural anesthesia with standby general anesthesia ready. Through the only two midline in, uh, intervertebral spaces L3, L4 and L4, L5, epidural catheter was placed and spinal anesthesia was given. We introduced to his needle through L3, L4 interspace and 15 degree deviation to left from the coronal plane and 16 gauge epidural catheter was introduced up to 8.5 cm in situ. Positive meniscus sign was checked before securing the catheter. For spinal anesthesia, 25 gauge quinquage needle was inserted through L4 L5 interspace with the same left deviation, and we gave successful spinal anesthesia with 3 cc bupivac and heavy and 20 mic microgram fluidine was added as adjunct. The sensory level of blockade was T6 and Bromet scale 3 motor blockade was achieved by 10 minutes. Anesthetic boluses were given as required for the 2 hours of surgery and adequate epidural analgesia was provided for 48 hours postoperatively through the indwelling catheter. Analgesia was one important factor during recovery concerning her pulmonary optimization. Deep breathing, coughing and early ambulation was encouraged. Bronchodilator therapy and incentive spirometry was continued. Patient was discharged 5 days later with very good recovery. She was advised for routine orthopedic and chest physician follow up. I will conclude the presentation with this. For patients for, of severe kyphoscoliosis, it is better to face the challenges of regional anesthesia if required with more intensive preoperative evaluation than face the complications of general anesthesia which could be manifold. I offer my sincere thanks to all of you for your time, the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Sassoon Hospital and uh, for my, all my seniors for guiding me. Thank you.